Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm going to be doing another uh, quick review. Um, this time is on the Brew Retrograph. I think this is probably among all my watches the one that more people would probably know about. It's, it was quite popular when it came out. Um, it still has a good following currently in the watch community. Um, yeah, so like I'm currently trying to do a review on the two vintage Seikos, but there's so much to talk about with those that I'm just gonna knock out some of these faster ones. So hopefully this won't be too long. Um, so yeah, this watch was one of my earlier watches. It was the first watch I got after my fashion watch. So I guess this was like my my uh, first step into the watch world, watch collecting community. Um, so at that point, uh, you know, I decided that I wanted to start a watch collection, and I invested in a watch roll. And I was looking for a watch that would fit, kind of like almost any situation, kind of like a one watch type of situation. So this watch had like 50 meter water resistant, had a date, and it had this unique rectangular shape. So it's it's pretty versatile. It could work for office, could be sporty, and if you put on a, like a leather band, it could even work in a dressy situation. So I think to this day, this is probably my most versatile watch. Um, you know, and being on a bracelet, it's very versatile. I could wear this for a daily wear, no problem. Um, so when I was purchasing this watch, I had the option to I had the option to buy it on a bracelet or this leather band. Um, I settled on this leather band because. The beads of rice bracelet that it came with, it, it to my eye, it, it had, it didn't have enough tapering. Like it looked very straight, kind of blocky. Which, if you wanted that look, that's good. But for me, I wanted a little bit more elegance in how I transitioned. So I opted not to get the bracelet, and I got this bracelet instead. It's a Strapsco uh, bandolier bracelet. So I thought this like had a good uh, vintage vibe to this, you know, with the name Retrograph and has some tapering to it. It's very well made, like it's super thick. Um, the clasp is milled. A whole bunch of micro adjustment. It's a very quality bracelet, and uh, I enjoyed it for a while. Like when you put this on that watch, it definitely makes a big presence. Like, but the issue I think I still found was the tapering was still not as much as I wanted. Um, and I think after I got this bracelet, uh, Brew came out with their next watch, the Retromatic. And that had a very similar bracelet to this. So I was very pleased that Brew liked this design. But that Retro um, Retromatic had a significant taper to their new bracelet. Unfortunately, the lock width was not the same as the Retrograph, so I couldn't just buy that bracelet. So I went on eBay and I found uh, this vintage Seiko bracelet that had 22 millimeter lug width and a very good taper. You know, the quality is definitely not as good as the Strapsco. It's a stamp clasp, but with this bracelet, it, it made this, in my eye, look very, very, very pleasing. Yeah, so let me do some of the, the specs. Uh, let's see. So yeah, this is the box it came with. It already has a whole bunch of the specs on it. 
but yeah the diameter is uh, 38 millimeter and then the lug to lug because this has basically no lug uh, it's basically the height is 40 41.5 thickness according to them is 11.4 and this watch wears kind of like a 43 if you do the surface area calculation it's got this polished side and then brushed surface at the top which is pretty neat uh, the back it's just got some text written on it polish again the crown is signed with a coffee bean. Uh, if you didn't know, Grew, it's a watch company that takes inspiration from coffee making or es espresso making. And uh, yeah, let's just start off this chronograph. This whole timing bezel with the smaller markers, it's supposed to represent the time it would take to make a perfect espresso shot. I think it's supposed to be more down here. Uh, some of the other versions have this bottom part colored differently. Uh, the day has quick set, which is nice. Uh, this is probably the running, no, this is the hour counter for this chronograph. So I guess you can time anything up to one hour. And that's the 24 hour dial, which is not that useful, but it's there um, yeah so 50 meter water resistance came on this uh, leather strap I did not wear this strap you one time but it is a good quality it's very soft it's not stiff at all brew I think it's capskin and uh, Pin and buckle has the brew logo on it, which is kind of neat. Let's see what else. Um, so yeah, it's got a loom. Um, I'm not sure if I can get a good loom shot. Uh, maybe I'll add in a picture. Um, so there are a whole bunch of variants of this watch, like in terms of color and dial design. Um, I believe only this and the white dial version has the second hand also loomed. Every other version, I think the second hand is not loomed. Um, the, there is one variant that uh, I was looking at to see if I wanted to kind of trade this in for. Was the uh, copper version. Uh, it looked very nice. It's hard to find because it's a limited edition. But um, the one thing with that one is the um, the minute markers are in black, and then the loom plots would be in this greenish white. So it did have a kind of a weird look when you see it from far. It's, this has like this look of um, a stick marker. Uh, the other one didn't. So yeah, this um, you know this case is very unique. Um, I guess the Russian would call this a fridge case, but this is kind of just like an Apple Watch case, I would say. It does, doesn't have any lugs, so lugless design. So in my previous video, I talked about the importance of having some tapering in your uh, in your bracelet when you have no lugs. Because if you did have lugs, it, it would help to start the tapering process itself. Um, you know, the leather band does taper, but yeah, their own Beats of Rice bracelet uh, did not taper. So, anyways, the um, the chronograph was had this bi compact design, which I really liked. Um, I think it gives it more of a vintage look. Uh, I never really liked the triple uh, eye design. Um, at certain watches, it still looks 
very neat. But I think when you go for more vintage look, the bi-compacts, it's, I think, more charming. All right. So the movement, the movement is a Mecha Quartz uh, from Seiko. It's the VK64. So Mecha Quartz is, at first I thought, oh, it, it's just like a hybrid movement. It sort of is, but not in the sense that a spring drive is. Basically what it means is the timekeeping, all that stuff is running off of a quartz movement base. And then they added the chronograph section mechanically. Like, uh, so when you, when you start and stop, the uh, chronograph would reset instantaneously because there are um, cams inside that pushes and forces it all the way back to the original spot. Whereas a completely coarse chronograph, it would digitally move everything back kind of smoothly back to the original starting point. So yeah, when you stop this and then you reset, everything kind of jumps back. Um, oh, I just noticed it's not aligned perfectly. Let me just try that one more time. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess that's the downfall with um, mechanical anything. It's just not as perfect as digital. Okay, I will keep that in mind. Um, let me just start this chronograph again. Okay, so um, a few other things, you know, it, I think I mentioned it a few times. Um, you know, when I started <clears throat> doing this watch collecting hobby, I uh, actually went and found my Grail watch and then decided to build my, uh, my watch collection and theme around that, that Grail watch. So it was the Glashuta original 70s chrono. And this was probably the closest homage to that watch. You know, that one's a TV dial. This one is a rectangular dial. It's a little different, but it had similar design. Um, and I think later on, there was another one I found called the Visivuit. Atavia Chrono. Um, that one is, was even a closer match to the Glass Shooter. It even had a uh, mechanical chronograph in it. But to this day, that watch is not out yet. So, you know, maybe when it comes out, I'll check it out. But for now, I think this is still a pretty, pretty good homage to that. Um, you know, I think even if I do get my Grail watch, this brew still has a place in the collection. It would be like a pretty neat look to see how my journey started and where it ended it up in. Um, so this box, it's a very cool box. Um, let's see, I think the design of the the box is also pretty unique. Let's see. Okay, so this box has just some of the specs on it. Uh, not much else. And then the inside box is where the watch is kept. It's very modern looking. You pull this out. This is like a neat little card. It tells you how everything works. Yeah. Some uh, microfiber cloth, which you can just keep in there. The tag. It's got this coffee bean logo on it. And then your uh, your warranty card, authenticity card, whatever it's called, and that's where the wash would be in. 
Alright, so that's pretty much the review. Um, yeah, if I forget anything, I'll, I'll add it in the uh, description. But yeah, for now, I think I'm gonna just get back into working on a vintage Seiko review. So, stay tuned. Thanks.